Okay, here we are once again. It is the physics video lecture, PSI 168, video lecture 16. So I'm going to start with the review question. I had a student ask about orbital, uh, the orbital problem. So that's the first thing we're going to do. And let me encourage you to anytime, uh, to ask anytime you want to review a problem, I can go ahead and do it. Typically, if one person wants to know about it, there are many other students who are, want to know about it as well. So first we'll review satellite orbits. And the second thing, I want to do a big project. I want you guys to do a project of looking stuff up on maps and on Google Earth. And I'll make a big list of that. It's an investigation of the North Fork of the Kings. So I'm just going to call this Kings River Hydropower. And our goal there is to get many screen captures and to get some other data as well. So that's what we want to talk about. And the orbital calculation is always worth reviewing. It's one of my favorites. So we're going to draw this circle and label it and discuss the labeling a little bit. The construction is right there in front of us. We've got a right triangle. We've got the radius and this is a near-earth orbit around Earth. So we've got the radius r. You notice this side has the radius r but there's a little bit sticking out there. That is what we called H, and this side of the right triangle we called L. Okay. So the first thing we have to note is we begin with um, the horizontal throw. Horizontal throw, and we argued, and you know a lot of people found those pictures of Newton and, and showed them to me in the notes. We argued that if you throw something with the right speed, it will just fall down the same amount, a certain amount each second, and that will be matching the curvature of the Earth. Okay. So if you get the horizontal throw with the precise, correct speed, and you're able to neglect atmospheric uh, wind resistance, typically by being a little bit above the surface of Earth, right? where there's no atmosphere, then you're going to get a, a throw that matches the curvature of Earth. So you got the horizontal throw, and we have L equals the distance in one second. Okay, so if something's moving forward, distance in one second, so you would have V equals L over T, where T is equal to one second. The speed that we're looking for, V, is going to be L over T, where T is equal to one second. Okay, we all number these things. And my third point is that there's that little bit of free fall. So H equals one half G T squared, comma, for T equals one second. And that's why h equals 4.9 meters. So that h equals 4.9 meters that we learned in the theory of free fall. And both of these things are happening at the same time. It's moving forward and it's falling. And so it's going in that little red arc that I've drawn there. So what's unknown in this problem now is L. We know h is 4.9 meters. We know r is the radius of Earth. And uh, we'll put its number down in a minute. So what we now do is use Pythagoras, Pythagorean theorem. And we just write it out. So that would be r squared here plus l squared equals the hypotenuse squared, and the hypotenuse is r plus h quantity squared. And now we have to expand these out. The left side stays the same. The right side we expand to r squared plus 
RH plus H squared. So, so far everything is exact. R squared can be dropped from both sides. And then L, L squared is 2RH plus H squared. So now L is equal to the square root of 2RH plus H squared. Right, we're numbering these things. So this was 0.4. Now we make an approximation, and it's an interesting fact that this approximation leads to an exact result. Um, but for our purposes, we don't have to worry about that. H is so much smaller than R in the radius of Earth that we can neglect H squared and we're just going to call it an approximation 2 times R times H. And it's at this point that we plug our numbers in. Okay? Because, so I'm just going to write, this is very small. So we can neglect it, we can ignore it, and now we're going to have the square root of 2 6.38 meters and our 4.9 meters. Yep, not so fast. Not so fast. I just missed the factor of a million. Okay, what's more? 2 6.38 times 10 to the 6 meters and 4.9 meters. And this is where you get something that's close to 7,900 meters. So that's how we did a geometry problem and found this length and the speed now is this length in one second, right? So meters per second. So because of that, V orbit, and that's for a near-Earth orbit, is, I'm just going to write 7,900 meters per second. And this is an interesting problem. There are ways to plug in. In fact, what one can do is plug in this one-half gt squared expression in here and then divide by t. And what you'll find is the exact formula. I'm just going to write the exact formula. The exact result is that v is equal to the square root of r times g. Very interesting. Okay. This would be the exact result. In fact, if you want, you can compare this with the one we get plugging these numbers in, and you'll see. It's absolutely very close. Okay, good. Like I said, anytime you have questions like that, go ahead and, and tell me in the email, and I'll be glad to discuss them here at the board once again. So that was our first point. I'm going to erase everything and start on the Kings River Hydropower homework project. So this is something I like to do in class and you know I have the projector up and I have Google Earth up there on the on the screen. And I can also project maps up onto the screen, but what I'm going to do is put that all on you guys to do, okay? Because it's really the kind of thing you want to do yourself to actually understand it, and I'll give some assignments that go along with it. And I'll briefly review our little hydropower cartoon, which we can use for, um, for orientation. So this is the homework project, and I'll save some room, I can formulate it under there as we go along. So here's the thing, we have a lake, maybe I can even use blue for the lake, why not? 
We have a lake that's held back by a dam. And right, so there's the water. It's held back by a dam. It's in the mountains. So in the background here, we have some mountains. And there is a penstock, which is a pipe, and it doesn't necessarily just go to the base of the dam. It could go far, far down the mountainside, and the powerhouse doesn't have to be in the dam, but it will generally be at some lower body of water. And this is what we're going to find when we investigate the King's River watershed. Okay. We'll find this repeatedly, and we're going to use Google Maps and Google Earth and whatever else you have access to, but a Google Earth should work fine, to, uh, to locate a bunch of these dams, get screenshots of them, get screenshots of the penstocks, um, and other information I'm going to write down for you. So we've got the mountains, we've got the lake. We have the penstock, we have the dam, and very importantly, remember we have the elevation difference between these two bodies of water, H. Powerhouse. Because power is generated, your electricity, you'll often see on the outside of this operation a bank of transformers and uh, towers that send the uh, high voltage electricity out to the countryside. So you'll actually also see, I'll kind of draw these high voltage things. going off somewhere, okay, power, and you have generators and stuff, okay, so I'll even write electric, electrical transmission, so penstock, we've got the lake, we've got the dam, the lake, or the reservoir, the word reservoir is often used, Yeah, so what do we have here in the Kings River? I'll send this up here. So our project is North Fork of the Kings River. Dam. So that's right in our backyard here, outside of Fresno. And first of all, we've got a little map here that I'm drawing. So here's Fresno. Okay. There's Fresno. And then you've got the Sierra Nevada. Mountain range. And over here, you have Owens Valley. So on the other side of the mountains to our east, east of Fresno, there's the mountain range. On the other side, there's Owens Valley. So you guys want to orient yourselves. And the, what you'll find here is a couple of reservoirs. Here, I'll draw them blue. Fort Wright and Wishon. Don't worry, I'm going to make a more clear list of these. This is just the first business with the map. And Wishon, and they go down some the Kings River and they end up here at Pine Flat. And there are reservoirs, there are a couple more beyond these, pen stocks and everything else that you can zoom in on with Google Earth. So. We're going to use Google Earth and I'm hoping that you guys
guys can do this. Google Earth. And the idea is you, you zoom in and out until you, first of all, you've oriented yourself in the, in the large scale and you kind of locate these reservoirs and you can type it into the search bar and it'll take you there and you can zoom in and out. You can tilt the picture so you have it in profile and you want to get the big picture of where these reservoirs are with respect to Fresno. So the first thing you do is get the big picture. I'll just write it like that, picture. And then you want to get a screenshot or more. You get a lot of screenshots, print them out, and turn it into something nice. So then we want to zoom in, and our project is to get the elevations and various screenshots of a series of reservoirs. Okay. Because what we're going to find is we don't just have that H one time. From Courtright Reservoir down to Wishon is about 500 meters, and then from Wishon there's a third one called Black Rock, and there's a fourth one near Bulch, and then there's you know a fifth one and so forth. There will be a total of six, uh, a total of five drops between six different levels of water. So that's what we want to investigate and get pictures of and, and become oriented. You'll see all of these things. For example, these penstocks, some of them are buried, but some of them are actually steel pipes running down the surface of the mountain. You can just zoom in on, zoom in on that and see everything. See quite a bit. So let me go ahead and I want to put down this list for us, and make sure it's legible. So two, we want to find the water levels in meters. And when I just opened up Google Earth, for what, you could get the meters. So water levels are the water levels above sea level. Okay. Water levels of the reservoirs above sea level in meters um, of, and here's my little list here, Courtright Reservoir. Let's see how many we can fit. We can go up there. So Courtright Reservoir, and then Wish On, W I S H. O-N, Reservoir, Black Rock. And you guys will pursue these on the map then, Reservoir. There's one whose name I don't know. I'm just going to call it Small Reservoir Below the, and here's what you look up, Below the Haas Penstock, H A A S, Penstock, well, you underline this. So this is your, this is what you can look up. It's actually possible to carefully follow these things down the mountainside and, and down the canyon and discover them all. But if you type these, these, uh, these words into the search bar, then it'll take you there. So continuing that list, Courtright, Wishon, Black Rock, that small reservoir, so those are one, two, three, four. Um, I have Kings River, Behind, so upstream, Pine Flat Dam, and then finally the Kings River below, that is to say downstream from Pine Flat. Yeah, you only list these 
whole list is somehow A, B, C, D, E. A, B, C, D. E and F. Good. But now they're listed. So you're going to zoom in on those and then the you can use the controls or you can use the mouse or whatever to drop that little cursor over the lake and you'll see its elevation above sea level in meters. And that's what we want. The reason we want that is because the difference between each of these levels is one of these heights that we're so interested in. Okay. The difference between these levels is one of these heights. And if you were an engineer, planning this whole project. Okay, so suppose the project had not been built yet. You'd go up, on, you'd use a topographic map and have an inspection of the valley that was, you know, where the canyon was dammed and the, and the valley was filled with uh, water. You'd figure out the volume of that lake. Okay, you'd figure out how much water it holds and you know these these drops H, and you would know the kilowatt hours, or the joules, you know the amount of energy stored in the entire system. Okay. Just based on these, and it's the homework we did last time. Basically the homework we did last time, you could scale it up or down depending upon what you find here. So this is a really nice uh, assignment, and generally we do this together, and I have, you know, like I said, I have this stuff on the wall in, in class, but uh, you guys will do it, and the advantage is you're going to get some screen capture, so let me write that down as well. So the homework, this is the Kings River Hydropower Project. So you want to get those elevations um, and continuing, you want screen captures of some of these things, depending on how you zoom in or not. For example, I'm just going to write lakes, dams, and penstocks. So in two places at least you have the penstocks. One of them I've already written down, there's the Haas and stock. And then there's also the Balch and stock. And they're running on the side of the mountain. Like I said, you can use the Google Maps to figure out how long these pen stocks are. You can, you can really figure out anything you want to know about this. So that is our project here. And uh, you want to take all of these, first of all you have the data, but you want to get a nice set of pictures here so that if you were to lay them out or you put them in your book and would they be clear to somebody else, right? You could show them to one of your friends and see if they understand what's going on. It is definitely doable because you can tilt the, you know, you can tilt the angle at which you're looking at the earth on Google Earth to see the profile of land and so forth. So yeah, that's our project. And uh, I'm not going to say much more today because that will give you more time to do it. Um, yeah, so the homework. So data on the uh, hydropower project. So data on elevations. Plus images of everything else. So something that looks good and looks clear. We're not done with the hydropower discussion yet, but I wanted to make sure it's, it's very concrete to you. I could even write here extra If you can investigate and get some pictures from the Hoover Dam 
project on the Colorado River. That's a historically very important one, Hoover Dam. It's right outside of Las Vegas. A lot of people, it turns out a lot of people have visited the thing before and actually taken the tour there. Um, but you can get images that indicate the whole size and scale of this. This project in our mountains is actually very in interesting. This system um, between Courtright and Pine Flat can generate as much power as Hoover Dam without a doubt, and uh, it's an interesting system of multiple dams, multiple penstocks, multiple power plants. And it's just, this is just one small corner of the Sierra Nevada. We have this kind of thing up and down the state. Okay, so that's what I'm going to end with today. This, you know, we've reviewed this a couple times. This whole project should make it more concrete and I'll spend at least one more half of an hour at least discussing some other aspects of hydropower. Um, this whole topic is pretty central to what we're doing. Okay, good. See you guys next time.